How does a pressure cooker work? The sound of a pressure cooker may be startling, but it is a call to you that it is doing its job. Yes, food will be served soon. There are two very important things happening inside the chamber of a pressure cooker. Steam and pressure. A combination of steam and pressure make the pressure cooker the efficient kitchen delight. The two work together to cook things in no time. One of the reasons we use water to cook food is because it is a better conductor of heat than air is. You can raise the temperature of water to transfer its energy to the water in food, basically cooking it. A pressure cooker increases the pressure so that the water will come to a boil higher than its regular boiling point which is 100 degrees Celsius. But this is only half the reason why it takes so little time to cook food inside a pressure cooker. The increased pressure inside the cooker literally forces the heat into the food. Think of the pressure as an invisible hand pushing the extra hot steam into the very core of the food inside. But if the pressure is like a crushing hand, then why doesn't the food come out all smashed? Well, this is because the steam applies uniform pressure to all the surfaces of the food and that leaves the food unsmashed. Parts of a pressure cooker A pressure cooker is made up of a pot, a lid which fits precisely on the pot with a locking mechanism, a rubber ring that goes between the lid and the pot so that no air can escape, a valve on top of the lid with a release whistle. There are two extremely important parts in all pressure cookers. The rubber ring that goes between the pot and the lid ensures that no air escapes from inside the container. If it did, then the pressure would not be able to build up. The valve on the top is a safety measure that makes sure the pressure does not build up to dangerous levels inside the pot. This could lead to a potentially dangerous explosion. It is designed to allow some of the steam to escape after the pressure inside reaches a certain point. And with that startling whistle, we know how much the food has been cooked. Project Ask your mom how long different foods would take to cook inside a pressure cooker. Ask her to tell you in how many whistles, not actual time. When she is cooking these different foods, see how long it actually takes. Here are the names of some foods you can try. 1 cup of rice, 4 potatoes, 1 cup of dal. What is friction? Friction is the reason we are not constantly slipping and sliding on floors, roads and everywhere. Friction is the force that is created when two surfaces move or try to move across each other. The amount of friction produced during this process depends on the texture of both the surfaces and the amount of contact force that is pushing the two surfaces together. The force acts in the opposite direction to the way an object wants to slide. When you want to stop your bicycle, you press the brake and your bicycle slows down because of the friction created between the brakes and the wheels. Different solid objects experience different amount of frictions. An eraser on a glass top table will experience more friction than a coin which will experience more friction than an ice cube on the same table. Why do you slip and fall when the floor has just been mopped? This is because liquid creates a barrier between the ground and your shoes and makes the friction a lot less. It is because of less friction that you hear of many accidents during monsoons. 
even though the friction of the brakes is still there, the brakes may be wet and the wheels are not in as much contact with the ground because of the water. Project Slide a coin across a marble floor and then slide the same coin across a concrete pavement. What difference do you notice? Why does this happen? What are batteries? Can you imagine a world where all electrical appliances had to be plugged in? Flashlights, cell phones and toys would be tethered to electrical outlets, making them clumsy and inconvenient. Batteries provide portable, convenient sources of energy for powering devices without wires or cables. A dry cell is a common type of battery used today. It basically converts stored chemical energy into electrical energy. In the most basic terms, a battery cell is made up of three components, an anode, a cathode and the electrolyte. In the dry cell, zinc is the anode, the graphite core is the cathode and ammonium chloride paste acts as an electrolyte. Due to a chemical reaction within the battery, the anode builds up an excess of electrons. This causes an electrical difference between the anode and the cathode. The electrons want to rearrange themselves and displace the extra electrons in the cathode. However, the electrolyte ensures that the electrons cannot travel directly to the cathode. When the circuit is closed with the help of a conductive path between the anode and cathode, the electrons are able to travel to the cathode. This in turn provides power to any appliance placed along the way. Over time, this electrochemical process alters the chemical makeup in the anode and cathode and eventually they stop providing electrons. And this is how a battery dies. Batteries provide us with a mobile source of power that makes many modern conveniences possible. How does a light bulb work? The law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It simply changes from one form to another. A light bulb is a simple apparatus that converts electrical energy into light energy. A bulb is made up of a positive and a negative terminal embedded inside the glass casing with a tungsten filament that joins the two terminals. When electricity is supplied to the terminals, the flow of electrons heats up the thin filament in between to the point that it begins to glow. This process happens very quickly. The air inside the glass is actually a small amount of inert gas that helps prevent the filament from becoming too hot and breaking. When the light bulb has fused, it means that the thin coil inside has snapped and therefore electricity cannot flow completely through the circuit. Can you research what is tungsten and what makes it a good material to be used in light bulbs?
atoms and molecules. Any object that occupies space and has weight is called matter. Matter is always found in three states, solid, liquid and gas. Matter is made of millions of tiny particles called atoms. Whether solid, liquid or gas, an atom forms the basic unit. Atom comes from the Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible. The theory of atoms was put forth by ancient Indian and Greek scientists. However, this theory could not be proved because of the lack of technology. These tiny particles can only be seen through a scanning tunneling microscope. The structure of an atom resembles an egg. The nucleus in the middle is like the yolk of the egg and the orbits around it like the egg white. Nucleus has positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. The orbits have negatively charged electrons. Two or more atoms combine to give rise to a molecule. A molecule can be two atoms of the same element or a combination of different elements. There are 118 elements known to man. Imagine how many combinations of molecules can happen then. How does a vacuum cleaner work? A vacuum cleaner works just like taking a sip of juice from a straw. As you suck the air out, juice from the glass takes its place. This is because you're creating a space of empty matter with your mouth. Since matter has a tendency to occupy space, the juice will flow upward and into your mouth as long as you continue to suck. Now apply this theory to a vacuum cleaner. A vacuum cleaner has a motor inside it that does the same job as your mouth. The rotating fan of the motor creates a vacuum and begins to suck in air through the suction nozzle at the end of a pipe. Any dust that comes within range of the suction of the nozzle gets pulled into the pipe and is collected in a bag. The next time you come across a vacuum cleaner, ask an adult to help you turn it on. Find different materials such as paper clips, a couple of coins and a small pile of dirt. Test how close you have to go to the material in order for it to reach the grasp of the suction power. How do rockets work? The rocket engine works on Newton's third law, which says, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. In a rocket engine, the fuel and the oxidizer are passed through pipes with the help of high-speed pumps. Under the high pressure, both are mixed in the combustion chamber where they ignite.
a large amount of hot gases are released under high pressure through the nozzle. This results in an upward thrust against gravity which propels it into space. How do soaps clean? Pure water does not have any cleaning properties. Therefore, we need soaps and detergents to remove oily grime and organic soiling. Soaps and detergents are surfactants, that is, they reduce the surface tension of water, allowing it to interact with oil and grease more easily. Soap is made by a process called saponification. This is where a triglyceride chemically joins forces with a strong alkali to fight grime. The triglyceride part of a soap molecule is hydrophobic, which means it is attracted to dirt and grime. On the other hand, the alkali head is hydrophilic, which means it attracts water. When dirt comes in contact with a soap molecule, the hydrophobic tail attaches itself to the dirt. Many soap molecules will attach themselves to the dirt to form a structure called a soap missile. Once the soap grime mixture is released, it remains suspended in the water and is washed away when you rinse it with clean water. What are X-rays? An X-ray is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Its wavelength is smaller than UV rays and is therefore invisible to the human eye. Due to this small wavelength, X-rays cannot pass through solid objects. The human body is made up of bones, muscles, skin and tissues. All of these have varying densities, bones being the densest. When you pass an X-ray through a body, the bones are the only part through which the X-rays are not able to pass. If you place photographic paper on the other side of the body, only those rays which have passed through the body will turn the paper dark. This is why bones show up as white spaces on an X-ray and this is how doctors can tell if you have a fracture in your skeletal structure. X-rays are even used to photograph old objects like artifacts and paintings because we are able to see details that have been lost by time and corrosion. Can you find out what kind of damage X-rays can do to your body over a long period of time? How does a hot air balloon work? A hot air balloon is a very simple type of aircraft that you can use to fly from one place to another. The working of a hot air balloon is simple. It is made up of a balloon-shaped envelope in which you fill hot air. The balloon is made up of a nylon material with a heat-resistant material at the mouth where the burner is. The liquid propane fuel is stored in cylinders in the wicker basket below. Hot air balloons cannot navigate on their own. They must rely on the wind to push them in any particular direction. Since the wind at different altitudes blow in different directions, the navigator of the balloon can increase or decrease the amount of hot air and make it rise and fall and take you on a magical adventure.
does a tube light work? When the switch is turned on, an electric discharge begins at the starter. The heat produced bends the bimetallic strip. Once the poles meet, the discharge automatically stops and the circuit closes. When the bimetallic strip cools, it returns to its original position. Meanwhile, the built-up current is transferred to the poles of the tube, vaporizing the mercury droplet. The mercury gas is then ionized by the current flowing within. The electricity causes tiny particles called electrons to travel at high speeds between the poles. These electrons hit the mercury gas, producing ultraviolet radiation. The glass tube is coated with a fluorescent material which changes it to white light.